It's official. Coronavirus is now like a slightly deranged kid in a slightly deranged candy store. It's collecting all of the worst things for your body and packaging them up to see what they do to you. Of course, the kid in the candy store is just collecting candy, while this virus is collecting mutations that make it more efficient at reproducing inside your body. But you get the idea. Here's what you need to know. A new coronavirus hybrid that combines the Indian variant with mutations originally belonging to the UK variant has been detected in Vietnam, according to the country's health minister cited by the AFP. The Indian variant is able to spread more easily than earlier forms of the virus partly because of a mutation it carries on its spike protein called L452R, according to Grace Roberts, research fellow in virology at Queen's University Belfast, writing in The Conversation. The L452R mutation allows the virus to bind to ACE2 receptors on human cells more stably. Once the two are bound together, the cell's membrane engulfs the virus and internalizes it. The Indian variant also carries a second mutation on the spike protein called E484Q. According to Roberts at Queen's University, research suggests mutations that affect this area of the spike protein may make the virus less susceptible to pre-existing antibodies. The new variant found in Vietnam combines both of these previous mutations with a Y144 deletion on its protein spike that is consistent with the UK variant, according to Vietnam's National Institute of Hygiene and Epidemiology, cited by VN Express. This missing amino acid can also make it more difficult for antibodies to stick to the virus, according to the New York Times. After keeping the virus at low levels for most of last year, Vietnam's infections since late April accounted for more than half of its total 6,856 registered cases, according to a May 30th AFP report. The WHO has not yet made any assessment of the apparent new virus variant. However, it has introduced a new naming system for notable variants based on the Greek alphabet. A statement on its website said naming variants after particular countries was stigmatizing and discriminatory. Under the new system, the UK variant is labeled as Alpha, the South African variant, Beta, and the Indian variant as Delta. The change comes in response to widespread displeasure among the scientific community over the use of national labels for new variants. In a letter to the journal Science, one group of researchers said the labels de-incentivized country-level genomic surveillance and transparent reporting of results. They also added that the practice was inaccurate because it is not known whether patient zero of each variant was a resident of or visitor to that country, and all variants have been identified well beyond the first countries in which they were identified. Of course, the basic science behind COVID-19 remains the same. A new study brings clarity to how the Wuhan virus infects human cells. Researchers from China have used cryo-electron microscopy to show how SARS-CoV-2 infects humans. The study published in Science says the virus targets a type of receptor found on human cells in the lungs, heart, kidneys, and intestines. Additionally, the researchers discovered SARS-CoV-2's genome shares an 80% genomic identity with SARS-CoV and 96% with the bat coronavirus rat G13. A previous study published in Science found the virus spike protein has two receptor binding domains, or RBDs, facing downward and another facing upward. These allow the virus to bind with and invade human cells. The virus targets a human ACE2 receptor that has bonded with an amino acid transporter. This subtype of ACE2 structure has never been discovered before. The virus uses the spike protein's UP RBD to bind with the ACE2 structure, which enables the virus to enter and infect the cell. According to the researchers, their discovery may help in developing a cure or vaccine that prevents infection by targeting ACE2. Scientists say the coronavirus is becoming more infectious without becoming more deadly. Here's why this is important. According to new research, the coronavirus had bifurcated into G and A viruses when COVID-19 spread to California in March. The study published in Cell states that the G viruses, which are now the dominant type globally, are differentiated from A viruses by variations in the spike protein. Spike proteins are the sugar protein structures on the coronavirus's shell that help the pathogen break into host cells. 
The G-type coronaviruses replicate more efficiently than D-viruses by a factor of two or three times. This means patients infected by the G strain have more viruses in their body. However, testing samples from six San Diego residents, the scientists found that human antibodies eliminated the G strain as well as, if not better than, the D strain. In a news release, lead author Erica Sapphire of La Jolla Institute says being weaker and less deadly is perhaps the G variant's competitive advantage, as people who are asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic are more likely to infect others. The virus doesn't want to be more lethal. It wants to be more transmissible. It wants you to help it spread copies of itself. It wants you to go to work and school and social gatherings and transmit it to new hosts, Sapphire is quoted as saying. Up until now, Taiwan has been one of the few countries not to experience a major outbreak of COVID-19, a fact widely attributed to its imposition of early and strict border controls, according to the BBC. The country's proud record, though, is now under threat after a surge in new infections inside its borders, and it brings up some major questions about Taiwan's response. First, here's the background to those questions. Taiwan on Monday, May 17th, announced 333 local COVID-19 infections, a new single-day record since the start of the pandemic, according to Taiwan News. The surge in infections continues to occur predominantly in the north of the country. New Taipei City again reported 97 cases on Sunday and Taipei 89, and those figures have now increased again. Taiwan's government had already responded to the increasing infection rate on Saturday, bringing in strict new measures in Taipei and New Taipei City, including mandatory mask wearing at all times while outside, outdoor gatherings being limited to 10 people, and indoor gatherings limited to 5. Businesses are also being asked to register customers before allowing entry. According to The Guardian, Wanhua District, one of the most heavily affected areas in Taipei, also saw trucks carrying decontamination teams cleaning its streets on Sunday. Citizens have already responded to the new measures by largely emptying out the streets, and Taipei's metro system reported a 60% fall in passengers on Saturday. However, some panic buying at supermarkets has taken place. Taiwan has taken delivery of a total of 316,200 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine. However, as of May 15th, only 186,149 doses had been administered, according to Taiwan Central News Agency. The rate is now increasing, with 32,251 people receiving the vaccine in Taiwan on Friday. Okay, so three questions now need answering. The first is, is a full lockdown needed? According to The Guardian, Health Minister Chen Shizhong has already announced remote learning for some school years and issued guidelines for hospitals to prioritize symptomatic COVID cases. He also told people to increase hygiene efforts and avoid unnecessary travel, saying that personal responsibility is very important. But is it enough? Question 2. Why has vaccine uptake been so low in the country until now? According to Taiwan Central News Agency, until this weekend, Taiwan was operating a self-paid vaccination program in order to avoid wasting excess vaccines that hadn't been taken up by priority patients. Was it because of skepticism about vaccines or complacency because the country hadn't been hit by COVID-19 in the same way as others, or both? And now for question number 3, perhaps the weirdest one. Does disinfecting streets like this actually work? Well, it seems like it might be simply no, if you listen to the WHO, which explicitly says in a briefing on its website, spraying or fumigation in areas such as streets or open market areas for the COVID-19 virus is not recommended before adding that it could actually be bad for your health. So why might governments like Taiwan's be doing it? Lisa Bricknell and Dale Trott, lecturers in environmental health at CQ University in Australia, write in the conversation, that based on our knowledge of the conditions required for disinfectants to work, we suspect these activities are as much about authorities being seen to do something as about actually stopping the spread of COVID-19. Taiwan has been one of the most successful countries in the world at tackling COVID-19, but its latest outbreak highlights both some complacency towards the virus and the country's notable vulnerability to its effects. Here's what you need to know. Last year, Taiwan went more than 250 days without reporting any locally transmitted cases of COVID-19, according to CNN. However, after an outbreak last week, as of Wednesday morning, May 19, it had 1,119 active cases, according to Taiwan Central News Agency. The outbreak has been linked to pilots entering the country and comes in the wake of an April 15th decision to reduce their quarantine times, according to Bloomberg. 
On April 29th, guests and staff at the Taipei Taoyuan International Airport Novotel Hotel were evacuated after an employee was diagnosed with COVID-19. The hotel had been used as a quarantine site for airline crew members and as a lodging for normal guests, according to Taiwan News. Days later, on May 11th, the outbreak resurfaced, this time with nine cases connected to the former president of the Lions Club International branch in New Taipei City, who tested positive, having visited a hostess bar in Taipei City's Wanhua District, an area that is now a virus hotspot, according to Bloomberg. Though rapid testing sites are now being set up, according to Taiwan Central News Agency, Bloomberg cites our world and data in reporting that until now, Taiwan has had one of the lowest COVID-19 testing rates in the world. What's more, by Monday, May 17th, just 0.9% of Taiwan's 23.5 million population had received their first vaccine shot. China, meanwhile, has administered enough vaccines to cover 14.5% of its population, while in the UK and the US, over 30% of people are already fully vaccinated. Now Taiwan is racing against time in three directions. Firstly, hoping new restrictions on movement reduce or at least limit the rise in infections. Taipei Mayor Ke Wenzhe has said that Taipei residents have already voluntarily locked down the city, according to Taiwan News, but the Taiwanese government has so far resisted a formal lockdown in favor of tight regulations around gatherings, as well as moving all schools to online lessons. Second, Taiwan is trying to rapidly increase its testing capacity. On Friday, the opening of four new rapid testing stations in Taipei was announced, with Taipei Mayor Ke Wenzhe issuing an amnesty order for undocumented migrant workers who need to apply for treatment or to be tested. Finally, Taiwan is also attempting to increase the percentage of its population that has been vaccinated. As of Wednesday morning, it had only taken delivery of around 315,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine. However, Taiwan's representative to the U.S., Xiao Bi Kim, said in a Facebook post on Tuesday that some of the reported 5 million doses of the Moderna vaccines it has ordered will arrive next month, while cabinet spokesman Luo Pingcheng announced that 400,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine were scheduled to arrive in Taiwan on Wednesday afternoon, according to Taiwan Central News Agency. Bloomberg reports that Taiwan is also likely to benefit from U.S. President Joe Biden's pledge to share millions of doses of vaccines with other nations by the end of June. Meanwhile, on Tuesday, May 18th, Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen announced that two of Taiwan's domestically developed vaccines should be ready for release by late July, according to Taiwan News. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.